Historically, there have been great debates on what are living system and what are non-living system. So we go from something non-living, as simple as inorganic compounds, to something as beautiful as a goldfish. Over the years, we also have been able to find some connecting link between the living and the non-living. For example, virus. A virus shows characteristics like that of a living system, only when it's inside its host. And it behaves like a non-living when it's outside the body of its host. One of the most intricate questions in biology is, what is it that makes something alive? What is the difference between the living and the dead? What is life? We only have to look around to see that our planet is completely covered with different forms of life. Much of the biological science focuses on unifying all aspects of living system. All living things share one origin and some processes of life, and the same or very similar in everything that is alive. Dear learners, a very warm welcome to all of you. Myself, Nakib Mehdi, and in this module, we'll try to find out the answers for what is life what is the criteria for something to be called living? What is biodiversity? And how do we organize the study of life forms? Life is seen in extraordinary habitats, from cold mountains to deep oceans, from evergreen tropical rainforest to dry deserts, from freshwater lakes to running rivers, and even hot water springs and volcanic vents. What is living? To qualify as a living thing, a creature must meet some criteria. Most biologists agree to the fact that living things tend to be complex and highly organized. They have ability to take energy and transform it for growth and reproduction. They have ability to respond to stimulus. They have cellular body and features of metabolism, self-replication and tendency towards homeostasis. Let's take each feature one by one for in-depth study. Living things grow. Every living thing begins the journey of life in a single cell. Unicellular organisms may stay as one cell, but they grow too. Multicellular organisms add more and more cells to form tissues, an organ, an organ system, and finally as an individual. As they grow, growth and development of living organisms are not the same thing. Growth is the increase in the size and the mass of the organism. However, development involves transformation of the organism as it goes through the process of growth. Butterfly, for instance, it starts off as a cell, then it transforms into a caterpillar, then into a pupa, and then pops out a beautiful butterfly. Plants often start off from a tiny seed and grow into a big tree. One thing common to all organisms is that they grow or develop to look just like their parent species even though there may be some slight variations resulting from mixing of the cells by the parents, as living things grow, they undergo a process of aging. As they get close to the end of their lifespan, the ability to carry out life functions reduce. Eventually, they die to end the life process. However, growth is hardly exclusive to living organism. Several non-living things, such as stalactites and stalagmites, crystals, isles, glaciers, grow by continuous accumulation of the same material out of which they are made up of. Thus, there are a number of such examples, as mentioned above, amongst the non-living world, which shows the characteristic feature of growth. Thus, it cannot be taken as a defined property of living organisms. Living things reproduce. Reproduction is the process by which new organisms are produced. A living organism does not need reproduction to survive, but as a species, they need that for continuity and to ensure that they are not getting extinct. There are two main types of reproduction, sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction involves two individuals of the same species, usually a male and a female. Here, the male and the female sex cell or gametes come together for fertilization to take place. After this, newly fertilized cell goes on to become a new organism, the offspring. This form of reproduction is seen in multicellular organism, asexual reproduction. This form of reproduction involves a single parent. Asexual reproduction is very common in single cell organism and in many plants. There are many forms of asexual reproduction. For example, fission is seen in amoeba. Budding is seen in lower organisms like hydra and yeast. Fragmentation is seen in spirogyra. 
Sporulation is seen in many of the fungus like rhizobus. Vegetative propagation, which is a very common example in plants. In this form of asexual reproduction, for example, bryophyllum reproduces through leaf buds, sugarcane and potato can reproduce through stem, while plants like dahlia can reproduce through roots. In unicellular organism, the parent cell just divides into two daughter cells. This term, this division is called as mitosis and it's also called as fission. In planaria, it regenerates. It's one of the organisms which shows true regeneration. Besides all this, as we already know, that there are many organisms which do not reproduce like the mules, sterile worker bees, and infertile couples. Thus, reproduction can also not be an inclusive defining characteristic of living organism. And of course, no non-living organism is capable of reproduction. Metabolism, a key feature of all living organism. First, let us try to understand what is metabolism. All living organisms need energy to grow and reproduce and maintain their structures and respond to their environments. Metabolism is a set of life-sustaining chemical processes that enables organisms to transform the chemical energy stored in molecules into energy that can be used for cellular processes. Animals consume food to replenish energy. Their metabolism breaks down the carbohydrates, lipids and proteins to provide chemical energy for these processes. Plants, for example, convert light energy from the sun into chemical energy stored in molecules during the process of photosynthesis. The living cells of every organism constantly use energy to survive and grow, thus making it essential for all living organisms without exception. Cellular organization. However, for all metabolic reactions, a cell body is required. The cell body wherein these reactions take place makes it most important defining feature of all living organism. And thus all life forms of have cellular organization, or as stated in the cell theory, all living organisms are made up of cells. Cells are the basic building blocks of the living organism. All living organisms respond to stimulus. Organisms respond to their environment. Organisms detect and respond to the stimuli from their environment. A stimulus is a signal to which an organism responds. Animals respond to many types of external stimuli, such as light, sound, odor, and heat. Humans perceive the world with many senses, including the sight, smell, touch, taste, and hearing. Other animals have different senses and may respond to stimuli that we are not equipped with. For example, some birds can detect Earth's magnetic field and use it for navigation. Mexican bulldog, bat, uses high-pitched sound that human cannot hear. Even plants like touch-me-not leaves close or fold when someone touches them. Flowers of some plant bloom only in the night. In some plants, flower close after sunset. These are all examples of response to stimulus, one of the most important characteristics of living organism. Evolution. Biology is the story of evolution of living organism on Earth. In all living organisms, present, past, and the future are linked to one another by the sharing of common genetic material, but to varying degrees. Homeostasis, living things actively maintain their complex structure and their constant internal environment through a process called homeostasis. The term homeostasis was coined by American physiologist Walter Bradford Cannon in 1929. Diversity of living world. Life has amazing ability to adapt to different environments. It can develop mechanisms for surviving from extreme heat to extreme cold, from extremely humid regions to long, prolonged droughts, high mountain altitudes to the deep oceans. Each habitat provides a unique set of conditions to which different organisms adapt and develop features and behaviors to be able to live in there successfully. This innate capacity of living life forms to adapt to its environment has led to evolution of millions of life form. It has been approximately 3.8 billion years since life began, and it has changed and evolved more variations than we can ever imagine. A group of living organisms consisting of similar individuals capable of exchanging genes or interbreeding, the species, the principal natural taxonomic unit, ranking below a genus and denoted by Latin binomial example, Homo sapiens. Biological diversity or biodiversity is the term given to the variety of life on Earth. It is the variety within 
and between all species of plants, animals and microorganisms and the ecosystem within which they live and interact. However, biodiversity is a huge concept which can be approached at any level, from chemistry of DNA to variations within one species to the classification of species themselves, classification of living organisms. The diversity of living organisms on Earth is remarkable. Humans have come up with ways of organizing, classifying biological diversity throughout human history. Though taxonomists have been successful in describing about a million of species, many millions yet to be described. Along with numerical diversity, organisms differ widely and along numerous criteria, including morphological appearances, ecological functions, feeding habits, mating behaviors, and physiologies. In recent years, with great scientific work happening at the level of genes, scientists have also added molecular genetic differences to this list. Classification in order to facilitate the study, a number of scientists have established procedures to assign a scientific name to each known organism. It is nearly impossible to study all living organisms, so it is necessary to devise some means to make this possible. This process is called classification. It is the process by which anything is grouped into convenient categories based on some easily observable characters. It is the arrangement of organisms into groups on the basis of their affinities or relationships. The modern system of classification began in 1758 when Carlos Linus, a Swedish botanist, published his book Systeme Nature. Need of classification. The organism should be classified due to following reasons. Number one, classification makes identification and the study of a wide variety of biological organisms easy. It reveals the interrelationships among different groups of organisms. It gives information about the organism and the fossils of their other localities. It also describes evolutionary relationships. Importance of classification. The contribution of classification is contemporary to all branches of basic and applied biology directly or indirectly. Understanding the diversity, classification helps in knowing about biological resources, extent of their diversity, and how they have been evolved. It helps in understanding phylogeny. Classification helps in finding evolutionary relationships, which is also called phylogeny, among the organisms. It helps to understand uh, interrelations. Classification is essential to understand the interrelationships among different groups of organisms. It helps in development of other biological sciences. Classification provides information for the development of other biological branches, example, biogeography, ecology, ethology, forestry, and many more. In agriculture and forestry, taxonomic knowledge provides vital information about the pest, pathogens, and hosts. In mineral processing, taxonomy gives the correct sequence of geological events in a particular area. It is basic to search for fossil fuels and mineral deposits. Biological control. Taxonomic knowledge is essential for accurate identification of pests and pathogens. Nowadays, instead of insecticides, chemic, which is a chemical control, natural enemies of pests are introduced for biological control. Conservation of wildlife. Due to human greed and ignorance, many of the species of flora and fauna have gone extinct. Taxonomists help to identify these endangered species and help in initiating the wildlife conservation programs. Quarantine, the spreading of new pests and disease from one country to the other through infected human can be restricted through quarantine. It can be done by checking and establishing quarantine laboratories at airports, seaports, and railway stations. Taxonomy is that branch of biology that deals with identification and naming of an organism. The ancient Greek philosopher Aristotle apparently began the discussion on taxonomy. British naturalist John Ray is credited with revising the concept of naming and describing the organism. The term taxonomy was coined by A.P. D. Kendall. Carlos Linus is known as the father of taxonomy and father of systemic botany, whereas Santa Pau is known as the father of Indian taxonomy. During 1700s, the Swedish botanist Carlos Linus 
classified all well-known organisms into large groups, the kingdom plantae and animalia. Robert Whittaker, in 1969, proposed the five kingdom theory, plantae, animalia, fungi, protists, and monera. Classification is not a single step process, but involves hierarchy of steps in which each step represents a rank or a category. Since the category is a part of the overall taxonomic arrangement, it is called as taxonomic category, and all categories together contribute the taxonomic hierarchy. Each category referred to it as unit of classification. In fact, represents a rank, and a commonly known term is taxon. Advanced form of taxonomy. Phonetic classification. It is based on the overall similarities of organism evaluated without regard to phylogeny. The modern methods of classification called cladistics is based on evolutionary history, arranging organism on the basis of their shared, similar, or derived characters that differs from ancestral characters will produce a phylogenetic tree called cladogram. The phylogenetic tree is also known as genealogical tree or a dendrogram. Systematics, it is the branch of biology concerned with reconstructing phylogenies and with naming and classifying species. The term systematics was coined by Linus and J. Simpson in 1961. Distinguishing systematics with taxonomy and classification, Julian Huxley in 1940 proposed the new term, the new systematics. It deals with the study of diversity of organism and all their comparative and evolutionary relationships based on the comparative anatomy, ecology, physiology, and biochemistry. Basics in biological classification. Biological classification involves the techniques of categorizing, identification, nomenclature, and grouping of organism. First and foremost, it is important to categorize and name the organism. Nomenclature. The term nomenclature means the scientific naming of organisms. According to an established system, the naming of plants on a scientific basis is called botanical or plant nomenclature. In earlier days, common or vernacular names were in use, which generally changes with change of language. Later, in the hunt of one common internationally accepted name of a species, scientific name have been introduced in form of polynomial, binomial, and trinomial systems of nomenclature. Polynomial nomenclature. Before 1750, taxonomists start using a string of descriptive Latin words to designate a species. For example, in the herbal of Clausius, 1583, a species of willow is named as Salix pumilia augustifola altera. However, polynomial nomenclature was discarded for two reasons. It was lengthy and difficult to remember. It often differs from scholar to scholar based on the characteristics chosen by them. Trinomial nomenclature. Mayer in 1953 introduced the concept of subspecies, which meant the geographical defined aggregates of a local population. The naming of a species, especially an animal, up to subspecies level is called trinomial nomenclature. Example, Homo sapiens sapiens, Homo sapiens neanderthals. Botanists don't consider trinomial nomenclature. Binomial nomenclature. Carlos Linus, the great Swedish naturalist, devised binomial system of nomenclature in his book, Philosophia Botanica, 1751. Now the binomial system of scientific naming of an organisms become a common and established practice. According to binomial nomenclature, the scientific name of an organism composed of two Latin Latinized words. The first is called genera or the generic name or generic epithet, followed by the second word called species or the specific epithet. For example, the botanical name of sugarcane is Sacrum officinarum. Where very rarely, the genetic and specific names are the same. They are called as totonym. Example, Gorilla Gorilla, Katla Katla, Naja Naja, Ratus Ratus, etc. Some organisms, fossils in most microorganisms, are known by their technical names only. The rules of binomial nomenclature. The rules of nomenclature are framed by standardized by five separate codes, such as the International Code of Botanical Nomenclature, also called as ICBN. Second, International Code of Zoological Nomenclature, also called as ICZN. 
International Code of Bacteriological Nomenclature, ICBACN, International Code for Viral Nomenclature, ICVN, and International Code of Nomenclature of Cultivated Plants, ICNCP. These codes help in avoiding errors, duplication, confusion, and ambiguity in scientific names. The rules of binomial nomenclature are, number one, biological names are usually written in Latin. They are written in italics. Second, a biological name usually contains two terms. The first term shows the generic name, while the second term shows the species of the specific epithet. Biological name is underlined when it is handwritten and are printed in italics. The first term or the generic name always begin with a capital letter. And the second, the species name, always begin with a small letter. To summarize, the living world is rich in variety. Millions of plants and animals have been identified and described by the large number still remains unknown. The very range of organisms in terms of size, color, habitat, physiological and morphological features makes us seek the defining characteristic of living organisms. In order to facilitate the study of kind and diversity of organisms, biologists have evolved certain rules and principles for identification, nomenclature, and classification of organism. The branch of knowledge and dealing with these aspects is referred to as taxonomy. The taxonomic study of various species and plants and animals are useful in agriculture, forestry, industry, in general, for knowing our bioresources and their diversity. The basics of taxonomy and like identification, naming and classification of organisms are universally evolved under international codes. Based on the resemblances and distinct differences, each organism is identified and assigned a correct scientific biological name, comprising two words as per the binomial system of nomenclature. So I hope you understand the lesson. In the next module, you'll learn about the hierarchy of classification and taxonomical tools. Until then, keep calm and enjoy biology. Thank you very much.